For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. The Nasdaq has once again captured attention by reaching a record-breaking all-time high. This achievement was driven by another strong day for technology stocks, particularly as several high-profile tech companies released their earnings reports. Investors seem to be banking on the tech sector's resilience. Despite ongoing economic headwinds, however, not all sectors are sharing this optimism. JetBlue, for example, saw a sharp decline in its stock price after the company shared a dim revenue outlook, which fell short of Wall Street's expectations. As this news hit the markets, JetBlue's disappointing forecast highlighted the financial challenges faced by the travel industry. With less than one week left until Election Day, voters appear more focused on economic issues than ever before. In recent polls, the economy has surfaced as the most critical issue in this presidential race, with voters placing heavy emphasis on their financial security and the nation's economic future. As this tight race unfolds, a surge of economic reports is expected to hit just before November 5th, offering insights into various economic indicators. These reports will likely provide data that will be summarized and repurposed for political speeches and headlines, giving voters an abundance of information to consider as they make their final decisions. Amid this busy period, the U.S. economic outlook is further complicated by external factors, including labor disputes and natural disasters. The recent Boeing strike and the significant aftermath of Hurricanes Helene and Milton are anticipated to distort some economic data, making it difficult to interpret trends clearly. These unexpected disruptions add an extra layer of complexity as the nation assesses its economic health in the last days before the election. The fast approaching deadline for voters, paired with this complex backdrop, means that every data release will be scrutinized and analyzed, likely impacting public opinion in one way or another. To give you a pulse on where the economy currently stands, let's delve into recent reports that shed light on the labor market's status. Yesterday, two key reports indicated a positive yet gradually cooling employment landscape. The first was from the Conference Board, which reported a notable rise in its Consumer Confidence Index. This index increased by 9.5 points, bringing the total to 108.7, representing the largest single-month jump since 2021. While this figure still falls short of levels observed before the pandemic, it's a positive sign that consumers are feeling more optimistic. In addition, the survey revealed that the proportion of consumers anticipating a recession Session within the next year has dropped significantly, marking the lowest level for this expectation since the board started tracking this question in July 2022. Alongside this consumer confidence data, the U.S. Department of Labor released the latest JOLTS report, which provided a look at job availability. According to this report, last month saw the lowest number of job openings in over three years, indicating that companies may be slowing down their hiring activities. This decline in job openings could be an early signal that economic growth may be tapering, although it's still too early to draw firm conclusions. Looking ahead, there are several major economic reports on the horizon that could provide further insights into the nation's economic momentum. Today, the United States government is set to unveil its preliminary estimate of last quarter's gross domestic product growth rate. This key economic indicator is expected to show a strong expansion of 3%, based on a recent survey conducted by Bloomberg. If this growth figure holds, it would suggest that economic activity remained robust in the last Last quarter, signaling resilience despite inflation and other pressures. Following the gross domestic product report, the next major update will come on Thursday when the government is set to release data on personal consumption expenditures. Analysts predict that this report will reveal that inflation has cooled to 2.1% in September, moving closer to the Federal Reserve's long-term target of 2%. This news would be welcomed by policymakers as it could signal that efforts to curb inflation are bearing fruit. If inflation continues to trend downward, it may alleviate some of the pressures that households have been facing due to rising costs. On Friday, the week will culminate with the highly anticipated release of October's employment report. This report is expected to give a somewhat ambiguous picture of the labor market. On one hand, the unemployment rate is projected to stand at 4.1%, marking the lowest pre-election unemployment rate seen in 24 years. This low rate suggests a strong labor market. However, job growth is likely to appear weaker than usual largely due to disruptions caused by the Boeing strike and recent hurricanes. 
Together, these factors have likely hindered hiring and job creation in affected industries, adding to the already complex employment landscape. Given the flood of economic data expected in the days leading up to the election, it remains uncertain how much this information will influence voters' choices. With so many indicators fluctuating and presenting mixed signals, voters may find it challenging to interpret what the overall economic picture actually means for their day-to-day -day lives. Even though gas prices, a topic of frequent public debate, are currently near a three-year low, the extent of a president's control over such fluctuations remains limited. In other financial news, J.P. Morgan Chase has filed lawsuits against multiple customers over what's become known as the infinite money glitch. This glitch allowed customers to withdraw funds from ATMs using invalid checks in a way that exploited a loophole. The bank's legal action involves multiple cases across three federal courts, with one particular instance involving a Houston resident who reportedly owes J.P. Morgan close to $300,000. While the lawsuits are civil cases, J.P. Morgan has referred these incidents to law enforcement for further investigation, and the bank continues to track down other similar cases across the country. The bank aims to recover the funds along with any applicable interest, as it seeks to close this chapter on a highly unusual banking loophole. Meanwhile, Alphabet, the parent company of Google, reported its financial results for the third quarter yesterday, surpassing analyst expectations, with revenue topping $88 billion. Following the earnings release, Alphabet's stock experienced gains in after-hours trading. This quarter presented numerous challenges for Google, including organizational restructuring aimed at advancing its position in the artificial intelligence race. The company also grappled with multiple antitrust lawsuits, with one high-profile case ruling that Google maintained an illegal search monopoly. Despite these obstacles, Google managed to increase its ad revenue from both its cloud division and YouTube, showcasing its resilience in a competitive digital landscape. In other corporate earnings news, Chipotle's latest quarterly report fell short of expectations, marking the restaurant chain's first earnings announcement since former chief executive officer Brian Nickel moved to Starbucks. This outcome has drawn attention to Chipotle's current strategies as the company faces stiff competition within the fast casual dining sector. Analysts will be closely watching how Chipotle navigates this transitional period, especially in the face of rising food costs and shifting consumer preferences. Shifting to the casual dining industry, TGI Fridays recently closed approximately 50 of its locations, a move that signals potential financial difficulties for the chain. Once a go-to spot for many American diners, TGI Fridays began the year with around 270 restaurants in the United States, now operates only 164 locations. Industry insiders have reported that the company is weighing the possibility of filing for bankruptcy as it struggles under significant debt and faces strong competition from lower-cost restaurants. Other well-known dining establishments such as Red Lobster and Buca di Beppo have already declared bankruptcy this year, underscoring the broader challenges faced by the casual dining sector as consumers adjust their spending habits. In the social media landscape, Platform X, owned by Elon Musk, has drawn criticism for showing a continuous stream of political content to new users, even when they choose non-political interests. According to an investigation by the Wall Street Journal, 14 experimental accounts were created with interests like travel, and crafts, all unrelated to politics. Despite this, nearly half of the posts viewed by these accounts were political. The most frequently encountered account belonged to Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign page, although many other high-traffic accounts promoted conservative viewpoints. This pattern raises questions about X's promises to advertisers that most content on users' feeds would remain non-political. Additional data from the Washington Post indicated that although the reach of politicians' posts has declined since last year, the most popular tweets from congressional accounts were those from Republican members. This trend, however, lacks conclusive evidence as to whether it reflects genuine user preferences or the influence of X's algorithms, as the Washington Post found no direct signs of algorithmic manipulation. In summary, the current economic and corporate landscape is filled with both positive indicators and complex challenges. As key economic data and corporate earnings reports continue to unfold, these updates will play a significant role in shaping the public's understanding of the nation's economic health. With Election Day just around the corner, voters will have no shortage of information as they decide on their choices. For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.